Have you ever sailed across an ocean on a sailboat surrounded by sea with no land in sight, without even the possibility of sighting land for days to come? To stand at the helm of your destiny. I want that one more time. I want another meal in Paris. I want another bottle of wine. And then another. stand on summits and smoke Cubans and feel the sun on my face for as long as I can. Right before we get into this, don't forget, head on over to my Patreon. It's only $10 a month, and you do get access to my private members area with hundreds and hundreds of other members, all looking to get on the water sooner than later. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another episode of Chasing Latitudes. Now, before we get into today's video, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and my sailing experience. Now, me personally, I have just over 200,000 nautical miles sailed. That might sound ludicrous, but I am a delivery captain. So that's what I do. I help people buy vessels. I help them get them to their final destination, as well as teach them how to sail along the journey. So when it comes to buying a sailboat and what is involved in buying a sailboat, what features you should look for, I have a pretty good handle on my experience to give you the best information needed. Now, one of my biggest issues in today's sailing society is YouTube sailors. 99% of these YouTubers that most of you watch and idolize are an absolute joke when it comes to sailing. Most of these sailing couples don't actually live on their boat full time. They'll run out in the summer, spend a couple months on the boat, then come back, put out a video every week for the next year. Meanwhile, they're just kicking back in an Airbnb. And one of the worst defenders of being an absolute potato for brains is a person called Lady K Sailing. Now, all this clown face does is copy my content. You can go right through my content and then look. As soon as I do a video, he'll put out the same video. It's utterly absurd. And that's a guy who has zero experience sailing. He's made one trip through the Caribbean on a sailboat, and that's it. Now, for me, this year alone, I have almost 30,000 miles sailed. I also have my six-pack captain's license as well as my 50-ton captain's license. So I'd like to go over some of the things that you should really be considering when you're out looking for a sailboat. One of the worst pieces of advice, besides everything that Lady K says, is that you should be going and buying yourself a cheap sailboat or you'll hear these stories of so and so bought a boat for ten thousand dollars and they crossed the atlantic yeah sailing uma did that too and then they spent years doing what i call polishing a turd they took an absolute dumpster of a foundation of a sailboat made it look all pretty inside but the thing's still ancient. And what are they doing now? A couple years later, they're completely tearing apart the vessel and doing the same thing again because they never addressed the foundational issues on that sailboat that come with age. So today, I'm going to run through, first of all, the monohull versus catamaran. Which one should you get? That's not even a debate. There's pros and cons to both. So I'm going to cover those right now. Now, in the comments, I want you to let me know, mono or cat? Now, first up, we have the amazing monohull sailboat. Been around forever. Now, one of the biggest pros when it comes to buying yourself a monohull is the entry price. They are much, much cheaper. As Lady K's Potato for Brains points out, you can run out and buy yourself a five dollars or $10,000 dumpster of a sailboat. Be convinced by that moron that you can take that around the world. You can just lose your money. Or you can be realistic, up your budget, save your money, 
Spend about 50k or more when it comes to buying a sailboat and get yourself the best foundation that you can. So the biggest pro to a monohull is the entry price point. Now some of the downfalls of the monohull that you're always going to hear is that they heal. What healing means is they will lean from one side to the other. It generally would be the opposite side that the wind is coming from because your sails are up and it's going to heal the boat over. Now, depending on what kind of sailing you're actually going to be doing, that can be an absolute nightmare. I've crossed oceans and done thousands and thousands of nautical miles offshore. When you're out there in heavy weather and you've got to keep the sails up and you're cooking and booking, that boat is so far leaned over and it's like that for hours and hours, sometimes days. Now, for a lot of people, that's just utterly annoying. So that's got to be one of the biggest cons of getting yourself a monohull. Now, another issue with monoholes, especially in the 35, 40, 45 foot range, is your limited lack of storage on board. If your goal is truly to circumnavigate the globe or do ocean crossings, then you're going to need a boat with a lot of storage. Now, the reason for that is oftentimes you get caught up in these islands needing to provision your vessel because you have a limited amount of storage. This costs an absolute fortune. If you go to Bermuda or something and try to buy groceries, it's mind blowing. You will spend hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of more dollars just buying groceries based on where you're located. So if you can do something better, such as go to Costco on the mainland and you have enough room on your vessel, you go out and spend a ton of money on groceries, but then you are set for like the next six months outside of getting some fresh fruit at different islands and places like that. So storage is really a big, big concern when it comes to mono hulls. And then the other thing, again, due to a lack of deck space and storage, you always wind up having to throw up an atrociously disgusting arch on the back. Everybody's all excited. I got myself a sailboat arch and I'm gonna put my solar panels up there and hang my dinghy from there. You haven't sailed much because when the back of your vessel is so cluttered like that, you can't see anything. And that will create some pretty, pretty big, if not dangerous issues when you're in following seas. You've got to be helming your vessel and paying attention to your waves. You can't just have the entire back of your vessel blocked off with jerry cans and dinghies and arches and solar and all this nonsense. It's going to do nothing but cause you problems long term. So that's a big, big con when it comes to monohulls. The reality, the only bonus to monohulls is the entry price. That's it. It's a fact. Now, I'm obviously not covering every single aspect of a model hole and some of the other pros versus cons. I'm only covering the major ones because these are the ones that are going to affect everyone on board. Keep that in mind. And if you have some pros and cons that you really enjoy or dislike about model holes, let me know in the comments below. But again, the reality is model holes are very rocky most of the time. And if you get those so-called classic blue water sailboats, those are not only rocky, they hobby horse and they take a ton of wind to get up and moving. Things like sailing Atticus's Pacific dumpster that they bought. That boat's an absolute trash can. I don't care how much money they put into it. It's a dumpster. So keep those things in mind when you're thinking about going out and buying a monohull. Another big misconception in the world of buying a sailboat is that you need to buy a boat to learn on. No, you don't. Sailing is not difficult. It's incredibly easy. What is difficult is learning boating. And you can learn boating on a variety of different boats without it having to be a sailboat that you bought for 15 grand and now have to pay all the storage and maintenance fees on it. Just go out, get some lessons with some friends, sign up for my Patreon, come on one of my blue water trips with me, and we'll get you experienced in the world of sailing and then you can decide if it's for you. Don't run out and buy a sailboat because you watched a bunch of these YouTubers, because I'm telling you, these YouTubers are lying to you and that is nothing at all what sailing is about or is even like. And if you're serious about getting yourself a boat, 
go to my website, chasinglatitudes.com. Sign up for a consulting package. I will walk you through every single step of the process to get you the best vessel that's going to fit your needs. I'll walk you through everything, schedule surveys. We will take care of everything. I'll even go to showings with you, go places, check out boats, anything you need. I'm here to help you get on the water sooner than later. So run over chasinglatitudes.com and get yourself a consulting package. Now this year alone, I've helped probably a hundred different people get new to them, fancy dancy used sailboats. And it's been very, very exciting for me. I absolutely love helping people get on the water sooner than later and teaching them how to sail and making lifelong friends. So grab that consulting package, stop wasting time and let's get you on the water. Ah, uh, and here we are at the world of catamarans. Now the biggest pro to cat or the biggest con to catamarans it's their entry price. They are definitely more expensive than your traditional monohull in every regard. Most of them are so big they can't fit into a normal slip, so you're always going to be dinged two, three times your slip fee. The running costs on these larger catamarans can be quite a bit more expensive as well because you've got two of everything basically. So those are things to keep in mind. Yes, they're more expensive at first. Yes, they're more expensive to dock. However, the Gemini Catamaran Company makes a fantastic catamaran called the Gemini 35 Legacy. Now that Gemini 35 Legacy is as big, if not bigger, than most of your 40, 41 foot sailboats online. And the room that you get with a catamaran is laid out so much better than with a monohull. Most things are on the same level. So again, it doesn't feel like you're going to go live in a cave anymore. You've got yourself a nice floating studio. And like I said, those Gemini 35 Legacies, those are about the price of a decent 45 foot monohull. For me, I would always, always grab that 35 Legacy far before any monohull at my age. I'm getting older. I get tired of going up and down the companionway into the salon. I don't like the limited deck space on your traditional 40, 50 foot monoholes. Some of the 50 foot monoholes are phenomenal, but there's only a few of them. And they're the price of a catamaran. So what are we talking about here? Catamarans are far more comfortable when it comes to living on board. And people always like say, oh my gosh, you're a dock queen. Who cares if you're a dock queen? If that's what you like to do and you want to live at the dock and be enjoyed your life on a sailboat and go take day sails, then go do that. All these people that are complaining to you about being a dock queen haven't sailed an ocean, let alone they couldn't sail themselves out of a paper bag. You guys are taking information from people that don't know how at all what they're talking about and they're just regurgitating other nonsense because they have no sailing experience. I see it all the time in comments from people like Lady K's channel, uh, Sailing Uma's channel. They're just people that don't, they're not sailors, they're fanboys. And that's cool. You want to live your life vicariously through some sailors? Go for it. But that's not what my channel is about. I'm not a vlogging channel. I'm here to help you get on the water sooner than later. The reality is catamarans are better than monohulls, period. They cost more money. They do a little bit of hobby horsing from the stern to the bow as far as movement goes versus side to side like a monohull. But they are far, far better. 